It's ten years to move from one side of my empire to the next, and I don't have any gateways, and... Oh, it's just... It's just an exercise in frustration. Hello everybody, your favorite neighborhood ace back here, and uh, today we're going to be doing something fun for once. Because, well, why want playing a game if we cannot have fun with things? Which is why I have created the Splash Zone. Now the whole point of this particular game is going to be finding every single habitable planet in the galaxy and splashing it. Or more specifically, building a colossus and then drenching it. Why do we want to do this? Well, specifically because we are oceanic, and more importantly, we are playing with the environmentalist civic. Now, what can we do with the environmentalist civic? Well, we can construct a ranger lodge, which then adds ranger jobs and allows us to get unity for naturally occurring blockers. And drenching entire planets means that we will create the perfect um, park for any species out there because let's be honest here the perfect biome for anything is of course the water now obviously we need to have a bit in here that absolutely makes this a miserable experience for me and i've picked out the best possible thing i could imagine welcome to the line uh the line is a galaxy type that um uh it's it never ends does it no no it it definitely it definitely doesn't uh there's a single planet at the end of the line and uh we're going to need to work our way up there uh, to in order to increase the size of of the splash zone but this is infinite choke nodes all the way down and i already hate myself for even wanting to try this but before we continue, this beautiful world is like a shed, and a shed that needs to be built up. In order to do so, I need to learn how to build things, which I already do to a certain degree, but I like to keep things up to date when it comes to the latest techniques, which is why this video is sponsored by Brilliant. Building means taking a lot of measurements as well as a lot of mental math, which is where Brilliant comes in. It's a fun and interactive way for me to freshen up my math skills so I don't stand in the middle of a pile of wood trying to remember how much I should be cutting off. Brilliant has gamified learning, so instead of being in a stuffy school learning from a book, it presents everything in a fun and understandable way from the absolute basics to advanced. For instance, I need to do a lot of building, so understanding how structures work and where support should be in a shed is pretty important. And Brilliant has a wonderful course on structure and truss layout, which allows me to refresh on that knowledge. So why not try it out? It may help you in your day-to-day -day work or it will just allow you to keep your mind sharp. Get started for free for 30 days and get 20% off on an annual plan by visiting brilliant.org slash aspec. All right, first things first, our economy is a total mess. Um, it probably has to do with the fact that we are running like a million specialists because A, we got rangers, and B, we got a temple. Why do we have a temple? Well, that probably has to do something with the fact that we're a spiritualist and a dash of authoritarianism because those two go hand in hand. Anyway, it basically means that we got nobody working on the lowest uh, needed goods which is obviously problematic. I'm just going to need to uh, remove all of our rangers so they can actually work in places where they can be a little bit more valuable. Uh, food would be good, plus 23. I don't think we're going to need that. What I do think we're going to be needing is, of course, some uh, minerals if we can. The minerals, Marie, uh, no, not like that. So I came to a little bit of a realization as soon as our economy went into the minus and immediately my entire empire is on the uh, verge of rebellion. And that has probably something to do with the fact that we are also running anglers. Now anglers uh, basically replace all farmers and uh, replace them with, you know, anglers and pearl divers. But that's not, that's okay, that's fine. The problem is, is that the pearl divers, um, well, let's put it this way, they generate uh, consumer goods. Uh, but they eat quite a lot of minerals as well as food, goods that we currently can't really afford. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and remove those jobs as much as possible. And we'll fill those back up once we actually have a use for them. Uh, because right now, yeah, we're, we're, we're producing enough consumer goods, guys. Uh, you can just be unemployed for now or turn into a worker where we actually need you. And with that out of the way, it's finally time to tackle the biggest problem at hand. 
the line. Okay, what are we doing here? Well, first of all, we're just going to go ahead and start surveying. I think it's basically impossible to click. Can I... Can I... No. 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 Oh my god, it's... I, I, I just want to... There you go. Okay, let's survey. Can I survey? I would like to survey here. Thank you, yes. Apparently, I don't have visibility on that. That's fine. We'll, we'll exit you. You're all queued up. Good to go. Excellent. It's everybody's favorite time. It's time for traditions. Now, ever since uh, the latest expansion came out, Paragons, uh, my thinking has kind of changed. I am no longer keen on Discovery as my very first perk because the council is just so good that statecraft has become my de facto first pick why well i want to get the shared benefits as soon as possible preferably before the first uh council has basically finished because then i can get plus 300 leader experience on my first leaders and that right there council can be available. a massive bonus and in addition we are spiritualists which means that we're going to get a lot of unity and we should be really good in that way so if we go to our council for instance uh infinite opportunities will be running out in 21 months if we can get uh, the statecraft particular tradition the one we just talked about within those 21 months which i don't think is going to be too impossible we should be able to get our leaders cranked up to a crazy amount super early on okay not gonna lie took a little bit longer than expected sadly by about nine months but we got shared benefits available now we will instantly get 300 experience as soon as we have this council uh, put into place which is what we're going to do right now instantly all of our leaders will earn 300 experience and will get better at things and champion of the people is something that i want because happiness is always good and then in addition to that we should probably try to expand the council which will finish off in 194 months of course as our chancellors become better then that should go uh, that should add up but at least we've already added 300 xp to our leaders early on which is really really a nice to have there we go we can even like upgrade this governor over here uh we should probably not have any of these weird bonuses over here trade value plus 15 build ship as counselor i mean trade value i guess that's nice it's time to fast forward the clock and we felt that the galaxy was pretty empty without having any other species around so we dove through the depths of the pacific we dove through the ice ranges of other planets but still couldn't find anything out there hell we even went into places we probably shouldn't gone to when it was dark regardless it's now 50 years later yes it is 50 years later and now finally i managed to get first contact why did it take so long because this entire string of stars had nothing but crystalline entities on it do you have any idea how much of a massive pain in the ass they are well, just just believe me, we're, it's they are a pain in the ass. Let's deploy an envoy here because I want to make first contact as soon as I can. And um, you know what? Uh, just because of that, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and move our battle fleets over there, just on the uh, on on the LD. Yeah. yeah. Whilst I'm dealing with all that first contact shenanigans, uh, some pirates have decided to sprout up. Now that's completely understandable. They're a part of the game. They're just super annoying. And I, of course, prepared a little fleet just to, to counter them. They're over here in my capital system. However, I've discovered something that I am not too happy about, and that is the following. Uh, normally, we would go ahead and uh, put everything on patrol. Uh, actually, in this particular case, we would just put everything at the end here. That's all fine, but uh, once that is done, I would put the patrol all the way at the end of the line. Now, observe when I do this. Yeah, that's really bright. You also may have noticed that we currently only have one planet, and we are almost 60 years into the game. And uh, this is causing some issues with capacity, because now I've got a whole bunch of pops uh, that can't have any jobs, and I'm not egalitarian, so I can't really get around it. Maybe if I go through my species and maybe do some rights-related stuff with citizenship, uh, living standards even, uh, no, no, uh, hmm. None of them are, these are really good, really. Well, I could go for social welfare instead of stratified. 
Screw it, we're gonna go social welfare and make these pops happier. However, once these pops are uh, ready to go, they will go over towards our new planet. We're currently terraforming over here. It is a desert world, uh, and it will be absolutely terrible all the time by the time we turn it into a water world, as we currently do not have the uh, Colossus just yet. But uh, don't you worry, the rest of the line, oh god, it's so long. <laughs> it just keeps on going. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, the rest of the line is going to quiver in fear from our Colossus once we get to that point. Jesus, if, 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 if ever. I never really talked about our origin. We are, in fact, the Ocean Paradise, which means that we do start with a size 30 planet. And as you can see, we currently have a bit of a population issue with both robots as well as our pops not being too happy. However, I have recently gone for uh, Hydrocentric, which allows us to uh, construct ice mining stations uh, on star bases, which then will allow us to do expand planetary seas on ocean worlds, which is actually really, really nice. And any uh, ocean pop or any aquatic pop, which we are, I believe, look, we, we do look like this. But it doesn't mean that we're not aquatic. So, yeah, just take that with you. Um, it, it basically means that they're just better at everything on those worlds with Hydrocentric. And if you do go Ocean Paradise or Aquatic in general, Hydrocentric is basically the way to go. And you cannot ignore it. Anyway, uh, I've built uh, the uh, required structure and now expanding the planetary sea so we can get an extra district in here. Once that is done... I don't actually think I'm going to build a normal district. Well, we'll get there when, when we get there. They should be doing so. Maybe the building just outputs more. I don't know. Regardless, we still have a unemployment issue and we're starting to move people to the uh, splish splash. In the meantime, trying to get resource silos as well as uh, industrial districts up and running. Uh, I would like to turn this into an industrial world. I know it's a little bit late in the game to do something like that, but still... Um, I need to get some fresh soil anyway, which is why we're just going to go ahead and turn these guys into our tributary whilst also claiming a fair amount of territory. And you know what? In this particular case, we can just uh, blast a line as soon as uh, we don't have any issues with... Oh god, I hate the line so much. Uh, I just want to... I just want to... Okay, I'm going to need to do this a little bit creative here. Go, hold on, hold on. Alright, here's the fleet. There's the enemy. Attack him directly. Thank you. You know, I don't usually in install ours. War is perfectly fine and stuff. But uh, all of a sudden, I'm getting refugees from places that... Oh, good lord. Okay. Uh, another empire just uh, decided to keel over. Um, the real problem I'm having currently is... Uh, yeah, uh, this is basically blinding. But at least uh, all of my ships can just go into like, one straight line towards the enemy it is essentially a tunnel and i can just send reinforcements in uh, as they go which is rather nice uh do i actually have access to cruisers is probably going to be the bigger question can i oh i can add cruisers uh you know what that means it's time for missiles and there you have it. A nice and quick little war here. Nothing to be worried about. There are no tributary underneath me. I will probably integrate them. I'm a little bit more concerned about the next potential roadblock that's over here. And that is uh, this Ditrieth uh, Autocracy. Uh, there is quite a lot of them. And I am going to need to set up a spy network here to even figure out what on earth is going on. Because that is a lot of stuff that they have in here. And it's all colonized. Every single one of these worlds. That's a lot of planets that I'm going to need to deal with. But it's a challenge, of course. The line is not for the weak of heart. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's definitely... Oh, my God. This is so long. Uh, we're getting there, though. We're getting there. We, we've managed to overcome our very first enemy. And that's exactly what we needed. We're just going to need to shut down a couple of uh, stations here and there. And then we'll see how everything goes. All right. Important question. I just managed to unlock my second ascension perk. Yes, I know. It is literally almost 100 years into the game. Long story, okay? I only have one planet. Regardless, I have the ability to go for mind over matter. Now, I really, really enjoy mind over matter because it gives me access to the psionics tree. In addition, also, telepathy is really, really nice, especially on the, on the admirals. So, because I am aquatic, 
and I use echolocation, I will take mind over matter as uh, the thing that uh, we should be doing here. Because uh, so far, so good. Uh, we're going to go to war with these guys very, very soon. They're currently equivalent to us, but we're in the process of building up our fleets and maxing things out. Uh, also, there is a fanatical purifier in the way, which is like a whole different problems. We'll probably need to set up a spy network there to see what's going on. But uh, we're getting there. We're about 20% up the line. More like 10, but still, you get the idea. And look at all these planets I'm going to need to purge and or splash. The time has come. It's uh, time to go ahead and uh, integrate these guys as soon as we can. Apparently, uh, our agreement terms don't really apply in this particular case, which means that uh, we're just going to need to go ahead and adjust that and then integrate them as soon as we can. Come on, agree to the terms. Come on. There you go. Okay, cool. So uh, this is going to take a couple of months. And uh, for those of you who are not aware, yes, there is a little thing at the bottom here. 24 months for them to integrate with us. And it will most likely clip cripple our empire because the AI is not necessarily known for being the most... What's the word I'm looking for here? <sighs> Decent when it comes to uh, building up its uh, its planets. But we'll, we'll see that when we get there. I'm probably going to get a ton of additional star bases. Which I will then have to build on the border here, ready for an invasion force into this territory and then onto the decimators. Who are underground? Are they subterranean? Man, I like how it says unknown origin with a subterranean background. That's like, no idea who these, who these, who these guys could be. Good times. Anyway, yeah, we're, we're doing well. Uh, we're equivalent to these guys, but we got we're about to get a lot more firepower and economy. So uh, stay put. The integration has come. We have just managed to uh, inherit a bunch of new unconnected systems, apparently. My god, none of this is connected to the actual main trade network. Whenever you're doing this, make sure that you always go and check out the trade button at the bottom right of the screen. And make sure that everything is connected up, otherwise you're just not going to get any trade from any of these places. And whilst you're at it, you should probably also increase the, um, uh, the patrol range of your fleets oh my god it's a flashbang yet again uh in the meantime though we're just gonna go ahead and uh, merge as much of these fleets together into one batch uh the murder of barrow i have no idea who you are or where you even came from but it doesn't really matter because in general like all these worlds are perfectly fine except they are a little bit dry and we are of course hydrocentric which means that uh, we do a we do we do very very well on ocean worlds and on top of that we also have something else uh we're just going to go ahead and uh, turn these places into ocean worlds uh because we can because it's for the good of the species i do need a couple more units of um of energy for that there we go let's get some more ocean worlds up and running and if i can i am just gonna go ahead and change this species that we've just annexed and turn them into aquatic as well because if we do that well they'll be super happy on every single world we do if we can't well sucks to be them i hope you learn how to swim now integrating another empire is fine but you end up with like tons and tons of science ships that you just literally have no use for and they all have an upkeep cost which is also not helpful and you kind of need to manually remove every single one of these which once again is not helpful and also i'm currently under attack by pirates anyway you're going to need to purge all of these from your system uh, which is obviously uh, problematic. Still, uh, we're about to go to war yet again because uh, the line must grow. And I've decided that instead of clicking on systems independently, I will just go with the flow. I will just follow the fleets and just click the on the system like this. I'm not going to play with the map anymore, only to illustrate my point and, of course, my All complete and total anguish Our when it comes to uh, this map. Remember those two uh, dust worlds that I was terraforming? Yeah, uh, apparently uh, we've managed to do such a good job that one of them is apparently going to be the Splash Zone 2. I don't think so. It's now going to be called the Beach. But apparently it's being referred to as a second home by our people because of how good it is. Apparently these pops, however, ain't that too happy. Yeah, they're not going to be happy because of the faction approval that they have. But I think it has more to do with the fact that uh, their Savannah preference, which means uh, 
They ain't not going to be doing so hot on a planet like this. On the other hand, we've got ourselves an engineer beauty over here. What do we got? What kind of beautiful world do we have? Amenities or happiness? I do like myself some happiness here. So let's go and do that. And uh, instantly this world is going to be awesome for our pops. Because of course, uh, we get to have uh, anglers and pearl divers, etc. So that's wonderful. We only have beautiful ocean worlds amongst us as it should be as it always should have been in the meantime we're about to go to war and i found something out really weird and that is that these guys are separatists and that means that they weren't here at the start of the game they actually broke off from another empire at some other point which is weird regardless what's going to be even weirder for them is that uh, well they're going to lose quite a lot of territory very soon let's start claiming some stuff and uh, you know uh we will uh, just take them. We'll just take all these worlds. Because they belong to us. To swim on. Or, or, or something. I don't know where I was going with this. So while I'm at war, I just came to the realization that I could potentially do something here. Now, if you are the kind of person that does not like bright screens, uh, this would probably be the moment to turn away. Uh, notice how uh, you've got this really bright line here because of the patrol and all the systems being so close to each other. I wonder if I can stack that effect. I wonder if I can stack it. No. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, man. I thought I had something cool on my hands here. Oh, man. I thought I was going to be like a full-on CSGO flashbang situation. So I have this planet called Frippet, right? Obviously, this is not a great name for a beach world. Uh, what is this called? Like, uh, deep blue sea. Ignore the first capitalization. But this, this planet is called Frippet. Then, if that planet was called Frippet, then why exactly is this planet called Frippet? Like, do we have another Tuscany on our hands here? For those of you who've been with the channel for a long time, I smash that like button down below and comment about Tuscany. Because, yeah, we, we may actually have a Tuscany on our hands again. Good times, good times. Oh my, an actual battle that may actually be interesting. 10k versus 25k. They got a bunch of destroyers in there. I'm not too impressed by this. Uh, apparently one of their leaders is just absolutely terrible. And all their ships are going to get toasted by mine. Uh, especially considering I've put nothing but missiles on all of my cruisers. Which is just going to slap them out of the sky. Thank you for coming. So, uh, with that out of the way, and there are my boarding craft, we're just going to go ahead and uh, move on towards the next system, because there is an ocean world over there, and uh, I do claim all ocean worlds as mine, uh, especially once I got that Colossus up and running, because uh, then we start splashing, boys. Uh, nothing like good old victory. Uh, we do manage to capture, we did manage to capture a bunch of systems. Um, which means that instantly... Oh, we got another Frippet on our hands, as I mentioned. Uh, yeah, which instantly means that our economy is like, oh, how am I going to deal with this? And, uh, yeah, uh, we do get a bunch of additional planets here, which is kind of nice, actually, as long as we get uh, enough uh, leaders on there. But these are Tomb Worlds. I don't think this is a good idea. What kind of species is this? Hold on, give me give me a second here. Okay. Tundra Preference Survivor. Did you have the Tomb World origin? No. The Separatists with a Tomb World origin. Because they have the Survivor traits. Fascinating. I, I cannot keep this tomb world though. I'm gonna need to resettle all of these people. Um, preferably to a space where there is actually jobs. Um, and I will need to start terraforming all these worlds to, uh, you know, ocean worlds because we did discuss that this was gonna be important. Why is this a generator world with all these mines over here? I swear, man, the AI is just weird sometimes. But yeah, uh, we're just gonna. Oh, there's not. Look at this beautiful, uh, this beautiful world over here. It's amazing. I love it. Yeah, another ocean world for me to enjoy with all my pops. I just gotta make sure that my own pops are growing there at all times. Yes, yes, very nice. 
So I wasn't paying a little bit of attention to uh, my uh, recently acquired holdings. It would appear that our good friends, the Decimators, uh, have decided to expand their territory ever so slightly. And uh, long story short, they're kind of making a run for it. And uh, this is the block I'm going to need to get up against uh, once I'm in there. They basically have as much territory as I do, which obviously is ever so slightly problematic. But once we get past that... We're still not even 10% up the line. It's 2313. And I hate this map so much. So I didn't know there was actually uh, a Khan on the map somewhere. Uh, the Great Khan Nasa is out there somewhere. The Zemmerpunk Horde. Um, I don't know where you are. Oh, there you are. Right in the middle of the map. Inside of this Pulsar system over here. Yeah, that's not actually like relevant to us. Because you are literally halfway up the line. Literally is not how I should be saying that, but you get a general idea. Uh, and these are some other planets that are not near, not really all that interesting. Uh, regardless, uh, we're not going to be seeing the Khan anytime soon. And even when we do, they are most likely going to be balkanized like crazy. Because I don't think anybody is going to be able to compete with them at this moment in time. Uh, also, these, uh, these decimators are still here. And they literally just decimated this uh, autocracy uh, quite significantly just now. Sucks to be them, but uh, we're not going to be seeing any con anytime soon. I am, however, really looking forward to go for a uh, containment ending situation on these guys. Because uh, I really don't have a use for these uh, tomb worlds, I'm just going to go ahead and resettle every everybody to uh, Travu. Why Travu? Well, because we've got all the jobs in the world there, and uh, we can just move everybody over there. Let's hope that we actually have enough resources to do this. Uh, we just ran out of money, so we need to sell some goods here. Nothing too crazy. And then just do it again, because once again, I don't really have a use for a lot of these tomb worlds, which is just unfortunate. There we go, and then that will be the last one. Influence well spent, and now all those pops are now hanging out on this world. And now, actually, we got uh, enough space for those jobs, Research which is really complete. nice. And, of course, instantly we get ourselves... Oh, Jesus, that is Research a little bit complete. unexpected. Uh, okay, they were clearly not ready for that yet. So, uh, But we could use more foundries, so uh, add more districts to this world, please. Uh, as we just literally just terraformed that into one of these worlds. Uh, they didn't like that very much. Um, so, unfortunate. But uh, nothing we can do at this moment in time. Again, learn to swim, guys. Seriously. Turns out that uh, moving an entire world of pops to another world is not the greatest idea in the, that I could have done. Apparently there's a mutiny on its way on this planet. Delightful. Uh, it will have to be dealt with, of course. What can we do here? Well, we got a planetary revolt. We can uh, give them some amenities, but uh, that requires consumer goods, something that we're already pretty low on. Um, we just need to find them jobs, really. It's the un ruler unemployment. That's the, that's the issue. Uh, at least we're stable in our economy in general. We're not really spending a lot of resources on other things, so I'm okay with buying just these resources right off the get-go. And it's... Order has been restored! That's how you do it. Just... Bread and games, everybody. Bread and games. We just discovered a really important little thing here. Uh, glandular acclimatation. Uh, habitability a modification to be specific here. But why is that so important? Well, in our quest to turn every single uh, planet in the galaxy, or specifically the line, into a uh, water world, it does mean that we end up with some species that may or may not be too cool with that idea. So instead, we can now turn their preferences into something a little bit more useful uh which is nice because it means that uh yeah they can now be super happy on the planets that they live instead of you know uh being super unhappy about the planets where they live specifically these guys they got a savannah preference i don't think it's the best for thing for them to be like that so we're just gonna go ahead and uh just uh, do some genetic engineering to make them uh, oceanic preference there and uh, whenever the uh these guys are out of the pile we'll just upgrade them and make them super happy on our worlds and they'll get bonuses as well because well as i mentioned before due to the wonders of hydrocentric well they're aquatic so they can get a 50 percent greater benefits on ocean worlds even though they're not aquatic they'll just have oceanic preference but whatever 
Alrighty, one more planet to go, and then uh, this empire will once also uh, cap have to capitulate. What is that name? Erythylopilil Octavian. Fleet engaged. Oh, oh, okay, cool. Um, what, what is with the planet system? What on earth is that? The Amamine Tetrahiloclin Sinatoc Chromure. Uh, if there's any um, chemists in the chat, uh, feel free to tell me what this actually is, and um, you know uh, what what kind of oh my lord, what is what is going on with this system? Uh, Simide, okay, that's fine, but theosulfur and pixelated else acid, and of course uh, transaluthia um, and all the fun and games that comes with that. Um, not entirely sure what on earth is going on with these names. All I know is that this is the last system in the line that I need to conquer. Except there seem to be some random star bases. Why? What has happened here? How have they snuck past me? Like, what's going on? Well, there you have it. We've managed to uh, take a down a peg. Uh, with all the fun and games that comes with that, and of course, it also means that now all of a sudden, all my fleets can join in to where they need to go because obviously they were having some problems. Uh, I'm having some piracy issues, as you can see. Uh, current piracy is is pretty high in some systems, particular in this one. The, the piracy is basically maxed out over there, which not a good thing uh which means i'm going to need to get jump gates at some point but uh yeah that's that's probably a discussion for another day i still do have this little problem here i need to get past the decimators in order to get into the larger galaxy once that is done uh <laughs> i'm fully expecting to be nothing but con back here Technology uh like secure. one giant balkanized con shenanigans like whatever the hell is going on over here basically so yeah um hopefully not that bad how strong are these guys at the moment they are superior that's not good we should probably reinforce our fleets and then uh take it from there do i even have battleships i do think i do have battleships Yes, I do have battleships. This junky boy over here. We're gonna start putting those in our fleets. And then the decimators will be Dalenda Esting because uh, I will be able to get a total war on them. And just take all their worlds just as I go along and it's gonna be glorious. Well, this is a little bit unfortunate. Apparently decimators have declared war on our protectorate. Which means that they have declared war on us. So this is a little bit uh, apprehensive here. What kind of war is this? Uh, the War of Cleansing. Alright, cool. Uh, I guess we're gonna go ahead and have this party a little bit sooner than expected. So, um, let's hope that we can get those battleships in. And, uh, save some of these worlds before they get completely purged. Alright, real talk. We're at war with a Decimator. A, basically, they're gonna try to annihilate everything that we stand for, which is obviously not something that we want. However, we can't really do anything against him at the moment because, well, we're not really in a good place to do anything. In the meantime, a whole bunch of you have probably been screaming off the top of your lungs, Acemec, you absolute dumbass, why are you not building any habitats? And considering we are 130 years into the game, I've heard you and I will probably do so as soon as I have this little war situation under control. I don't know whether or not that's going to be enough time. So in the meantime, uh, we're just going to go ahead and start adding battleships to our main fleets. We have two of them, so at least that's something. And uh, we'll start building those as soon as possible. The main problem here is, is can we compete with these guys because they are superior? Which basically means that I'm going to need to reinforce uh, some of these fleets in uh, a choke node system. Now, thankfully, this entire map is one giant choke node that is going to give me a friggin' ulcer. Because... <sighs> My lord, I hate everything about this. Because I am a smart cookie, I decided a while back to have some espionage going on. And uh, we are in a very, very strong position because we can basically see everything that we are uh, from this empire. We have, for some reason, 97 intel, uh, where we should only be able to get 40. I'm not entirely sure how that works. 
But uh, yeah, I, I can basically see everything that is up here. Specifically the military intel, and they are superior to me. Uh, except, you know, I can see exactly what kind of ships they are running. It's a lot of auto cannons. It's a lot of um, plasmas. There's just a lot of stuff in here that I can counter relatively easily. The main problem is, is that it's about 40 to 50,000 fleet power. And I'm not even close to that. I'm basically capping out at about, I want to say, 30 to 40. So I'm definitely behind. So how am I going to win this? Well, we are going to need to take a look at some of these ship designs and see what we can do. Like They are very heavy on the shield damage in this particular case, but they got a lot of tracking. Uh, then there is a lot of plasma throwing here, but not a lot of missile defense from what I can see. Let's take a quick look here at these destroyers. No, well, a couple of missiles here and there on their corvettes, but not a lot of point defense at all from what I can see. This means that a super heavy missile approach could be the way to go here against these guys because they really have no defense against that. And bypassing all their shields is exactly what I would want to do. The more I look at it, it looks like their entire fleet is just set up for point blank range engagement. We got disruptors, we got plasmas, we got auto cannons. There's just not a lot of uh, medium to long range stuff here. Sure, there's some nuclear missiles here and there, but not much that they can really uh, engage with at, at long range, which is great for us because it means that we can set up our um, our designs a little bit more efficiently so we can take a look here um, we want to make sure that we stay the hell away from these guys as much as possible in terms of our doctrine so swarm is not something that we would want we want to make sure that we are picketing as much as possible same thing goes for all of our other ships as well we want to engage them for as at as long as possible and make sure that we stay the hell away of the enemy wherever we can Maybe we should also throw some, uh, yeah, some artillery, etc. Maybe we should throw some anti, um, anti stuff into the to mix here. Maybe something in terms of line of some a little bit of point defense. Yeah, let's add some barrier point defenses into the mix here and just see what we can do with this because I think it would be super helpful to have against uh, those missiles. But the most important thing is is that we stay the hell away from their uh, ships as much as we can. And uh, if that happens, then we should be able to just take him out on our own uh, our own side. Why? Well, now they have about 70,000 fleet power on their side, and it's starting to look more painful by the second. Now, I've managed to crank up my fleets to about 50 to 60,000, with one fleet in particular just being absolutely batshit insane. However, we're going to increase that even more with the Great Awakening, where all of our latent psionic pops will become... Uh, well, as the uh, name already implies, psionic, which basically will mean that any sort of uh, leader that we have within our empire will automatically become psionic, increasing weapon damage up by 10%, which is uh, great for us because we're going to need that firepower. I'm also trying to figure out where on earth my battleships are because uh, they're not here yet and they should be. Apparently, I have three of them. Don't know where they are, though. All right, I'm tracking them. They are slowly but steadily moving in our direction right now. We got a couple of thousand coming into my uh, Vassal's territory. It's a lot of point-blank range stuff, and they're not moving together in a single group, which is going to be their undoing, because it looks like that they are... Wow, okay, at least five systems behind, behind their uh, reinforcements. This means that this is the time to strike. We are going to engage as soon as we can uh, we need to take down this fleet and we need to take them down at range we got about 20k on the field and let's see where they're going okay they are very most definitely we grow moving in stronger. towards my uh, allies territory and uh, with a bit of luck they'll stick to the planet here yeah they'll they'll engage my ally will get decimated they will lose the system Hopefully my carrier fleet will be... They won't be here in time. The system will flip. We already knew that. But at least we can start taking him down piecemeal. Where is my fleet? Alrighty. Here are my boys and girls. Ready to go in there. Uh, they're on the next system. Again, I want to engage them for a, a maximum possible range. 
because again they do not have a lot of okay let's slow things down am i going to be able to engage them at short range because i got a lot of missiles and we are trying to do as much artillery combat as possible the first shot is going to be the most important the more missiles we can get onto the field uh the better so here we go let's take a look whether or not my doctrine is going to be the right one here thankfully we don't need to engage the station they look like they're going to be disengaging that's not very uh, decimator Fleet of you guys engaged. never mind we managed to get in range all right missiles are away and they only have short range weapons from what i can see we need to stay at range for as much as possible there they go some purple for you come on guys stay at range especially the cruisers very nice the alpha will just swallow them whole here comes the backup fleet with the battleships next time uh for the next engagement we should try to maintain distance Ooh, this is not looking too hot right now because again they got a lot of point ra point blank range engagement going on here which is not all that great but did my ship fleet just disengage no but a lot of destroyers disengaged though, which is not the end of the world because i got my reinforcements here and these 20k being taken off the field is basically already the death knell for them because what are they going to do at this point right like they can't do anything about it my battleships stay at range they're just going to go for the broadsides we're going to take down this fleet my other fleet's going to re-engage we're going to be just fine let's take a look and there you have it okay let's take a look at this engagement they lost three fleets worth of stuff we lost a minimal amount of stuff that is great you are going to be following the battleship fleet from now on and you're on the hotkey group four yes it will be slow as hell but it's everything that i ever wanted am i going to need to go and push that is the question because i don't see any any other enemy fleets down the line as of right now there is a small station over here 4k we can engage that no problem uh it doesn't look like there is any additional enemies downrange from here so first engagement we won because we stuck at range for as much as possible of course until the uh, smaller weapons decided to come in action which was obviously a little bit more problematic all righty here we go second engagement of the war 8k 7.3 I did some refitting on my ships, by the way. I put quite a lot of disruptors on there. So all my corvettes are basically just filled with disruptors at this moment in time. I'm just a bit concerned about the amount of firepower that I'm putting down range here, whether or not it's going to be enough. But at least we're uh, nearby a station that can actually use it. I'm more concerned whether or not there's any other hostiles on the other side here. Uh, yeah, okay, there is a little bit of firepower over there. But as long as I can take this stuff down... We should be good, and we can actually go for a bit of a cozy-looking push. Now, this is the first reasonably challenging war that we've had so far. Like, we can take down these enemies relatively quickly, and we should. We just need to be super careful with what is going to be the next system over. Like, I don't know. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, seventy thousand fleet power from the enemy um we are sitting just under 80 but i don't want to engage them unless i can avoid it for instance i don't have an admiral on this fleet and that is a problem because we should always try to have an admiral on our fleets especially in situations like this but now we're going to need to prepare to engage this little block here and they are very very busy bombing this planet it's a lot of point blank range weapons they're going to eat up my corvettes like mad that is problematic very problematic how much of ships did i lose before mostly corvettes okay so the fodder is dying as expected but we can deal with that we just need to make sure that this station uh comes back online so i can actually uh heal my fleet because the armor is a little bit low there great they managed to fight us to a standstill which means they'll have more time to basically survive uh except we still have on the other side of the galaxy 
uh, the galactic community sprung up, which we could join if we wanted to, but I'm not going to for now because I like to know what's uh, what's a surprise on the other side. Also, uh, the Connet has collapsed into a million different balkanized states on the line, uh, which hurts me intensely. Uh, apparently, there is a galactic community now. Uh, I ain't going to join it, so yeah, good times. Uh, still need to kill off these guys, and they are going to be painful. Council, uh, like I said, they managed to started. fight me down to a standstill, so I need to take a couple of years before uh, I can do Council agenda anything useful again. But it means that I can upgrade my ships and maybe, finally, bring the splashdown in. Speaking of which, my fourth ascension slot is here, which means that we can finally get it there it is the colossus project we're gonna go and uh, splash some worlds and we're also gonna breach the shroud but uh yeah we're going to splash some worlds uh it's gonna take us 60 months to get there and uh we got a whole bunch of debris all over the place uh which we will survey as much as possible and uh basically make sure that uh we uh get as much of this alien technology as we can uh but still you know we're going to need to do so also i'm out of energy which is very much a thing that i should not be having right now because i'm just selling everything that's not even bolted to the ground why are you not at a place where you should be a crew quarters here i'm just paying so much upkeep for this fleet it's actually ridiculous ah yes the gun that's pointed at the head of the universe uh divine enforcer yes and they make everybody religious please and that means that we can now design our ultimate weapon, which should be in this category. At least I would hope so. Where are you? Not available just yet, but uh, regardless, we will uh, have it soon. Ah, there it is. Still 33 months ago, but uh, yeah, we'll, we should be able to do so. Uh, I still have some economy issues at the moment, which is a little bit annoying, but nothing that I should not be we able to stronger. handle. I just need more energy, really. If I can get that, then everything we is sorted out. We'll see. We'll see. I just need to, you know, take these guys down a, down a notch. There she is. It's finally here. The thing that we've been waiting for for so long. The Divine Enforcer Deluge Machine. Uh, this is the Duskull design uh, of Deluge Machine. What does it do? Well, it, um, it drenches things. And that's its entire purpose. We're going to build it. Uh, it's pretty expensive at about 11,000 alloys, but totally worthwhile on what we're going to do with this. Every single planet in the galaxy is going to be a water world because of this. Yeah, they, uh, they should probably start uh, evolving some gills over here. So you may be wondering, Aspec, what is this weird-ass line that you're building over here? Well, my friends, my dearest friends... That is my attempt at by building a hyper-relay network down the line, which is about a thousand stars long. I would like to point out, we're 150 years in, and this is how far we have gotten. We've barely gotten control of what? How many systems do we have control of? How many is this? How many systems? 58 systems. This is only 58 friggin' systems. 58. This is how many more I have to go. This video is gonna be an hour and a half long at this point. Yeah, screw it. I'm not gonna wait on uh, this stupid thing to be done. Uh, Delenda asked for these uh, here decimators. Uh, there we go. Uh, let's get ready to party. Oh, look, they got a cool cloaked ship over there. Well, that's gonna be hella useful once my uh, ship fleet kicks in the door, as opposed to my bicycle fleet, which is still uh, at home. I'm not entirely sure why my 56k fleet is having so much trouble with a stupid station. Regardless, uh, there go my guy armies automatically, as they should. If you don't know how to Our do that, by the way, you can set your uh, armies to aggressive, and then they will automatically invade any fleet, uh, any planet that is available, uh, which is super useful. In the meantime, though, fleet gonna go ahead and uh, just they're just gonna go ahead and just take down every single thing. Oh look, they got a hyper Victory. relay over here. How Drink incredibly useful. Huh, thirty nine pops, eh? Hmm. Of oh, what flavor? What flavor of pops? Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, they're not genetically engineered. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Where, where, where are you in this list? Hold on. Uh, 
Yeah, there you are. Okay. Um, hmm. You're, you're gonna just have to go somewhere else, I'm afraid. The hate on this goddamn map simply does not finish. Because now, every single species in this damn galaxy is trying to make first contact with me. And I completely forgot. I completely forgot that I had set up a hundred different species on this thing. The sheer amount of hate that is currently dripping from my eyeballs cannot be calculated in human terminology. I just want this war to be over so I can just crash the door in all the way down the- Oh my god, it's so long. Like, I'm, I'm trying to build the Hyperlane re uh, Relay Network, and I'm pretty damn sure, I am pretty damn sure that that sadist, that absolute sadist of a designer of this map has disabled gateways, so I cannot build them, and I'm pretty damn sure that I'm losing my goddamn mind on this godforsaken map. This planet had the gall to defeat my ground troops. Now... There's only one pop down there, just the one, apparently. Uh, apparently they just colonized the place, which is, on one hand, kind of low-key adorable. On the other hand, it's a tomb world, which we need to get rid of. Anyway, here's my Colossus. Uh, it's gonna go ahead and drench the place as soon as we can. There you go, little boy. Excellent work. We're gonna see how many pops are gonna go away here. Uh, whilst the rest of my fleets are just uh, actively trying to do whatever they need to do in order to... Uh, win this war. Uh, we are, in fact, uh, you know, ahead of things, but that doesn't really mean all that much because, you know, we won every single fight that was relevant. And, uh, oh good, another contact. I'm looking forward for them to, um, you know, close their borders to me. Anyway, uh, the weapon is firing. Um, defeating my ground troops is just an, in an invitation to get your world splooshed. That's essentially what's happening. And oh, look at that, everybody is instantly closing their borders with me. What a surprise. Anyway, on to the next one. Uh, we've got more planets to uh, to sploosh. Ooh, there is a bunch of them over here. So we will sploosh all of them. we got hyper relays as well. That's just Hostile absolutely delightful. Engaged. All right, important moment. For those of you who are not aware, I've gone psionic. Uh, about, I think about an hour ago we talked about this. At least that's what it feels like at this moment. Apparently we can... Uh, Turn a leader into the chosen one, which is exact. <laughs> Never mind, they died. <laughs> leader instantly just. <laughs> uh, so I just found out about something that's actually super useful. Um, so I got my Colossus selected. You can queue up deluges. I can literally go on like. A route where I can say, hey, uh, this planet over here, uh, yeah, we don't want that anymore. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and queue that up for destruction. Uh, that would be nice. So that one's queued. And uh, then we'll just go over towards Nexus. Drench that one as well whilst we're at it. And uh, then when we find another one down here, uh, we'll just queue that one up as well. Ain't that just an absolute delight. I think there's another one in here. Ah, we're just going to go ahead and drench every single planet that we need to do. And we don't we just add them to the queue and that's it. I just hit five, add them to the queue, and uh, that's it. Uh, I only have uh, this much more line to go. Oh boy. I wish I had gateways right about now. Cool. They only uh, control one more system. And uh, that means that they've got... Uh, they, they were so kind to build hyper relays all the way up the, uh, up the queue here, which meant that... Um, yeah, my, my ships can move really quickly and reinforce super quick as well. Uh, what it does, however, mean is, is that uh, my Colossus can also move pretty darn quickly, which is exactly what we need. And uh, basically means that uh, whatever ship you send out uh, is going to have a very good time. Let's put it that way. The thing is, is that I'm going to slowly need to hop, skip and a jump to claim every single system. Because until I own the system, I don't control the hyper relay. So, for instance, I'm taking down this uh, station right now. Now I control the hyper relay, and any support craft that are coming up behind me 
they'll be able to reinforce super quickly. Uh, oh, here's their remaining uh, their remaining area, but they should probably more be more concerned about this little bad boy that's coming up uh, of the line. Uh, because uh, the hyper relays start around here, and uh, yeah, when that happens, that colossi are, is going to move pretty darn quickly. And all of your worlds, like, I don't want to be that guy, Fire and will. but they got to be toast. Second chimes the, the charm, I guess. Um, our leader is now immortal, as they should be. Uh, they're apparently no longer psychic, but they are definitely the chosen one. And uh, are they actually the leader of my empire? No, but they soon will be. Uh, as they are currently now uh they are a governor aren't they research uh, complete. where are you yes yeah, psychic the chosen one environmental engineer oh my yeah that's 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 gonna be good plus 10 stability uh, that's the kind of stuff that i would like to see problem is these guys have now pieced out and i'm going to need to do something but i noticed something interesting that i didn't know did not know that could happen apparently i may have pieced out but my Colossus is still queued up to take over that planet. As in, I'm at peace, but the Colossus don't give no shits. I think I found a way to, to, to fix this issue of me going completely insane by trying to defeat the entire galaxy at once. And that is, well... Sometimes you have to become the bad guy. Like, I'm not a bad guy, but we're going to need to do a little bit of menacing here in order to get over this little shenanigans over here. I I'm still very, very curious what's going on here. Oh, the universe. Oh, Jesus. That is a lot of empires that I can fight. Um, oh God, this, is, this is double menu. That's how big it is. Um. I'm just super curious what's going to happen here. Like, in 90 days, are we actually going to deluge a neutral world? Because if so, that would be a little bit buggy and a way to get around any sort of issue when it comes to um, total wars, etc. Oh, it, it didn't do it. it oh... Oh, that's that guy on Miloki makes me sad. Well, I guess we'll just need to move over here then, and then uh, later on we'll we'll just declare war on them one more time, and then just drench their remaining worlds. I think that's probably the best way to do it because they have been doing a little bit of expansion again over here uh, into this empire for some reason. Uh, they managed to uh, get loose there, but uh, soon I will start menacing, and the line the line will have some issues let's put it that way so i splashed a lot of planets which is obviously kind of part of the core however um I, I, because i splashed all those worlds i now have to colonize all of them so i'm colonizing like 12 planets right now i hope that's okay like i only only have four five hundred and seventy eight pops in total i don't think this is gonna go wrong if i turn all of these on automatic build right like nothing bad's gonna happen i would hope you know what's even the best part about these new colonies? Because they're splashed worlds, their population may be gone, but their infrastructure still exists. Um, yeah, uh, these people can just jump straight into those jobs. Uh, all of these worlds have infrastructure on them. All of them can go straight to work without too much input, which is just wonderful. I can just assign them to a sector and turn them to auto and have fun, guys. Just grow some pops and spread them all over the galaxy. This should be it. This should be the Colossus that's sparking a joy, so to speak. Yes, the last world of this damn... The spoiler race. It's not 2400. It's literally 200 years into the game. And I've barely moved up the line. Mainly because of these jackals. Who have just stopped and stopping me the entire way. Plus there are no gateways. Which basically makes it impossible to do anything. I do hope that some of these other empires. Whose doors I'm about to kick into. Uh, are going to have hyper relays. Basically all the way up and down the, uh, the line so to speak. And boom that should be it. That is an empire in ruin. Sweet.
Time to move into the next one. Oh, good lord. They do not like me at all, do they? Oh, no. Everybody hates us because we've been blowing up planets. And apparently, they don't think that's very cash money, which I just think is just silly. 40 years have passed. 40 years. The game is slowing down quite a lot, and my PC can't handle it, even though it is pretty darn beefy. Um, it took me about three hours to spend those 40 years and finally get to the point where I can build an etherophasic engine because this galaxy needs to burn. It needs to burn in the hole that it deserves to die in because my lord, do I absolutely despise everything this galaxy type has to offer. The endless choke nodes, the... Uh, uh, I'm gonna put some perspective here, right? Okay, so um, this sh this ship right here, construction ship. It's uh, it's on it's in basically in the middle of my empire. If I want to move it to the edge of my space, just just for for, it takes five years. It takes five years to move just halfway across the damn. Just, uh, it's ten years to move from one side of my empire to the next, and I don't have any gateways. And uh, it's just. It's just an exercise in frustration, and I am going to end it all. So how am I going to do this? Well, I am going to consume every single uh, star within my area of the galaxy, and I'm going to do that by just cracking every single star I, uh, I have access to, uh, which I think should be relatively straightforward. Uh, we're just going to shift click and crack every star if we can. Otherwise, we're going to right click on every single one of them. Uh, irregardless, we're going to essentially just lay waste to the entire galaxy because I'm sick and tired of what's going on here. I get two of these and every single one of them gives me a ton of additional dark matter which I need in order to, well, you, you get the general idea here, uh, to, uh, yeah, uh, move up the line, so to speak. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and blow up every single star that I have. I don't even need to go to any enemy territory because how many stars do I have again? Oh yeah, I got 223 systems under my control, and I will kill off every single one of them that does not have a, uh, a planet in it, just to get my point across, because I will end this galaxy, and there's nothing that the AI can do about it. Yes! <laughs> yes, my salvation is finally here! <laughs> uh, I am going to annihilate every single single star in sight and on top of that i will hold my ground uh in this system over here this pulsar i'm gonna put nothing but armor on this place and uh just basically just hold the line uh specifically over here actually yeah uh that shield nullification is going to be great because i'm going to put nothing but armor as well as uh, other stuff in my lows and uh good luck penetrating anything in there oh do we have another one? Oh yes Oh, yes, it feels so good to be bad. They're inching forward, they're slowly coming towards me. Uh, which is fine, you know, they're, they're, they're taking space, slowly but steadily. Uh, there's nothing really valuable over here, it's just some in-space resources, which doesn't really hurt me. They're just gonna hit a tiny little stumble block once they reach this system, because due to the joys of everything being a choke note, uh, having a pulsar uh, with nothing but ships in there, with nothing but armor, as well as crystalline plating, and on top of that, nothing but, uh, I don't know, platforms that um, just have the same thing, uh, nothing's gonna get past this, and uh, I will probably eat those worlds, uh, words, but it doesn't really matter, because... Uh, at the same time, if my machine decides to respond, uh, I'm still blowing up stars left, right, and center, just so I can fuel the machine, which is currently upgrading, and will be done upgrading in about five years from now. Yes, the uh, Galaxy Dalenda Est. See, these aliens over here are about to make a rather large mistake. Sure, they got 43,000 fleet power, that's cool. Um, yeah, there's about 300,000 sitting in the system over here. So we'll see how they do here. All right, let's uh, take a look. They just jumped. Where did they go? Where did they go? Did they go back? No. They couldn't have gone. They, they went back? No, they couldn't have gone. 
Okay, so they're now over here. Okay, they're just they're just going back. Sure, why not? You know, there's a uh, there's a line of death coming in their general direction with all these black holes just popping up. They must be sitting on the other side of the galaxy and be like, what is going on over there? I'll tell you what's going on over there. I need to fuel the machine. And the machine will be done in just over a year. And um, sooner rather than later, the galaxy is going to be in a bit of an upheaval. Everybody's at, the, uh, at war with me, but they can't do anything because uh, there is these uh, purifiers over here that have closed the borders to everybody. Which basically means that there's probably a giant fleet over here that can't actually get to me. So, whereas in the start of the game we were struggling with purifiers, now they're basically holding the door for us. Thank you very much. I swear to god. It's 2451, a galactic power surge. It better not be within my empire. Where is it? Where is this galactic power surge? It doesn't look like it's in my space. It better not be in my space. Where is it? Where is this galactic power surge? It looks like we may be in the clear. Where did it come from? Okay. Alright, alright, alright. Okay, it, it looks like it's really far away. It is... Not as far away as I'm comfortable with, but it's still far enough. We're going to win this game. The Unbidden are about to eat the entire galaxy. Plus, if they decide to invade my space, which is fine, they'll just break their teeth on this Pulsar system because they'll lose all of their shields and they'll die instantly. So not only does this galaxy have a nemesis who is just going uh, all Pac-Man on the cherries that are all of these stars over here. In addition, the Unbidden are about to play um, Tag Your Planet is Dead with every single one of these empires down here. So uh, good luck with that. Wow, the AI managed to um, get a Galactic Council election for the first time 250 years into the game. Um, Well done, everybody. So proud of you. Standing ovation. Uh, I don't really don't care about this territory over here. Um, <laughs> they still won't be able to do anything about it. And I'm still going to annihilate the galaxy. It's just a question of uh, how long it's going to take. Let's just actually turn this into like something uh, more sexy in this particular case. Like you're gonna be on the you're gonna be on the surface of Splash Zone, right? And it's like this beautiful planet, and then at night. This is what this is on the horizon, just pumping energy into a star. And in three years time, we're just going to be generating even more stuff. Oh, and we get some money from our enclave as well that I totally did not um, conquer to get. And the uh, stars are just being blown up still. So, yeah, what are you guys going to do about it? The tendrils of the aerophasic engine are ripping massive holes in the fabric of the shroud and some stuff is leaking out into the galaxy yes we still need more dark matter uh we are generating a lot of resources through this and uh, it doesn't really matter uh at this stage because well you know they can uh, the, uh, the unbidden is are coming basically they're coming for the rest of the galaxy i do like how we still get people uh excuse me sure let's do that uh, I like how we still are getting refugees from somewhere. Uh, it looks like it's actually coming from the unbidden area. And uh, they're just they're just coming over to join us. Yeah, they're ready to elevate. They're ready to ascend to higher places. I'm assuming that this is the, the last stage of what we need. Ooh, the great disturbance. Uh, the construction of the aerophasic engine in Linnea has left the shroud in a state of turmoil. And... Uh, we got little space stuff leaking into tides. the space-time continuum. Uh, I'm okay with this. Uh, I hope the rest of the galaxy is okay with this because uh, it's going to cause some problems for them. Even the unbidden, you know, they may seem uh, it may seem like a nice snack for them or something along those lines. Ah, uh, yes, Technology corrupted secure. avatars. Delightful. Okay, well, at least it looks pretty. I'll give him that. Like, that's, uh... Should probably make some video stuff about that. That is, that is some pretty stuff. Now, apparently, uh, messing with the shroud means... Ooh, okay. Apparently, we can blow up stars sideways now. 
uh, because our Star Eater decided to, you know, engage a uh, entity that was just sitting there, and uh, because of that, the star just uh, blew up sideways. Nothing wrong with that, of course. It's just more case that we have gotten ourselves some corrupted avatars all over the place. Apparently, they don't like it what we're doing with the shroud, but that's okay. We're we're we're, we're fine with this. Why is all of this? Oh right. This is no longer our space because we blew it up. How's that engine doing? 1800 days. 1800 days and I will be released from this absolute torment that is the line. Uh, I also found out that, um, I thought this was rather interesting actually, if we go to our, our victory screen. Victory is currently not possible and I'm currently second for some reason. I'm not entirely sure how that works, but I think there is a fallen empire over here or another empire that I simply have not contacted yet somehow uh irregardless is on the other side of the galaxy though, so they don't matter but uh yeah uh, apparently there is an empire that is relatively close to me i'm guessing it's these ones because they seem to be pretty strong but i mean they're about to lose everything and i'm about to win everything so uh get ready to engage in the shenanigans that is of the shroud I don't know what's going on, but it would appear that the AI has managed to push back the Unbidden completely and are now in the process of trying to get through the portal. That is fascinating, because you'd think that the uh, Unbidden would just absolutely pounce on whatever is surrounding them. Now, I know that there was probably a giant fleet of every single empire in the galactic community at large just sitting around the corner over here, uh, waiting to get access through this uh, uh, Determined Exterminator, which obviously they couldn't get past. So they probably just turned about and went straight for the Unbidden instead. And uh, yeah, uh, they got kind of stomped there. But in the meantime, though, uh, it would take them at least 20 years to cross this bit of space, just slow boating about, if they even managed to get through. Uh, and on top of that, how much time do they have, sir? How much time do they have till the end? Oh, yeah, about three years. So, I don't think that's gonna happen, guys. Don't think it's gonna happen this time around. Oh, yeah, look, I got visibility on some of the stuff over here, because I still got a little bit of Empire space over. Oh, yeah, they do have some fleets. That is adorable. Wow. They actually managed to destroy the interdimensional portal. That is... Well, yay! Fireworks for everybody! The invasion has been defeated. Um, don't want to... Ra <laughs> Why do I get unity from this? I wasn't involved in this. I didn't do anything about this. Like, I'm sure somebody's gonna, somebody's gonna get the Dimensional Warlock out of this, but... Uh... I, I, I was not really involved in this process. Like, I don't even have all my traditions, and it's 250 years, 260 years into the game. I'm, I'm so proud that you guys managed to be, defeat the Unbidden and staved off the uh, total annihilation of this piece of space. But I, you're about to be swallowed up by the Shroud wholesale. So, small victories, I guess. Here it comes. Here it comes. Six days remaining. One day. Oh, the end is here. Finally, I can leave this wretched line behind me by a click of a button and we win the game. I want to thank you for uh, joining me on this uh, 263 long year journey as well as an about an hour worth of video, maybe a little bit longer once I get down to all the editing, etc. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely been something. And uh, let me know in the comments below. And also make sure to uh, have a click on the good old sponsor for this video. As uh, they have made this place possible for your uh, entertainment, of course. But without further ado, let's do it. I like how the game is frozen. All my consecrated worlds have been profaned. All of the empires are done. All my leaders are are dead. And look at that. Nothing but black holes 
across the line in places where they rightfully deserve to be completely annihilated all the way through this wretched place i hope that they've learned their lesson hey but at least you know they managed to defeat uh you know the unbidden so very proud of them there uh let's have a quick look here at the other side of the galaxy whether or not this was the fallen empire down here jesus christ that i didn't go all the way there uh i don't see any broken things but we can take a look here that's dasha okay we had dasha spawn in this area that's those were all gaia worlds that's hilito okay so here's gargantua so that's where the uh interesting so that was gargantua over there so where did everything spawn temporal decay what an interesting name for a black hole fascinating if you uh enjoy couture skull pass are you serious Okay, the Caravaneers right here. Never knew it. They were on the other side of the galaxy. Uh, Apon. Soil of Hope. Never heard of it. Okay, then we had a couple of other weird ones over here. Like, which one was this? I know there was one fairly... Oh my god, this is so long. Trim. The Mistake. Oh, here, this is where they were. Okay, so we got the Mistake. Celestial Throne. Uh, etc. So, you know, Sky Temple was here. So this is where the Fallen Empire was. Uh, not too far away. There was Soul. You know, Soul. Uh, we actually conquered it. We were actually really close to the Fallen Empire. Could have taken all of that stuff. There's Zeta Reticule. That's got uh, a bunch of explosive stuff in it. But yeah, if you enjoyed this particular video, let me know in the comments below. If you watched for this long, you may as well just, you know, give a comment and uh, see if you like this uh, more longer form uh, of content. Because if you do, well, then I can always do more. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, my name has been Acebeck and make sure you check out this video that you see in front of you right now because we talk about some really cool things. See you next time.